Today we're going to tie a little caddis emerger pattern called the spotlight emerger. First thing we're going to do is start off with a 2487 emerger hook and some Vivas 14 knot black thread. First material we're going to tie in is some small copper wire. We're going to tie that in right about a third of the way back from the eye of the hook. And then we're actually going to take this copper wire and we're going to wrap down the bend of the shank here. We're going to go about halfway down the bend of the shank. The next material we're going to tie in is some Vivas medium pearlescent tinsel. We're going to tie that in right at the back as well. Then we're going to take our thread forward here and let it hang and then we're going to just take that tinsel we're just going to lay basically one layer of tinsel over the body just enough to cover up our thread and give this fly a little bit of flash. is one of my favorite caddis patterns. It's also one of the busiest caddis patterns. There's a lot going on on this fly which makes it fairly difficult to tie but it is hands down one of my favorite. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some micro olive velvet chenille. We're going to take it in and we're going to let it overhang over the butt there just a little bit. Once I've got it measured out, I'm just going to tie it in right behind the body of the fly here. I'm going to take my wire. I'm going to use my wire to lash down that chenille. Once you get it started, then it's a little easier to keep it kind of going. You want to make sure you keep your chenille right on top of the shank of the hook as you wrap that wire over it. Sometimes you can have to maneuver it with your finger. And you can capture that wire. Next we're going to tie in our parachute post. For that I'm going to use some little fine pieces of calf body hair. You want to pull out any of the short fibers. You want to drop it into a small hair stacker. Give it a couple taps. It doesn't take much with the small hair stacker. Just a couple little taps. Get all those tips nice and even. Then we can tie it in. We want it to be about half of the length of the shank of the hook. So I just kind of roughly measure it out. Put it in place. And lay down some nice tight wraps. This can be fairly difficult stuff to work with, so just take your time. I'm going to take all that hair, we're going to lay a few wraps behind it to kind of prop it up. Then you can take your thread, and we're actually going to take it and wrap it around the parachute post a few times. This can be kind of tricky. It takes some practice. It's best if you just get a couple started, wrap down on the shank, and then you can go back up the post once you've got it a little more secure. I'm going to go up the post just a little ways. There 
we go. Now we're ready for all the other materials. This is where things get a little tight, um, a little more complicated. Um, so you just take it one material here at a time. So the first material we're going to tie in here is going to be the antenna. What I'm going to do is just cut a little section out of the tip of a mallard feather. This is one that I've already used and tied a few feathers on, or a few flies on. So I've already kind of got it going here. We're just going to isolate two little fibers and stroke the rest of those fibers back and out of the way. You can see how I just isolated the tips of that mallard feather. Then we're going to take those two little mallard feather barbs and we're going to tie them in. We want them to hang over the back of the fly about a half to a full length of the fly. So I'm just going to tie them in and kind of let them hang off the, the back a little bit. You can maneuver them slightly with your fingers before you really bite down with your thread. And you can carefully trim those out of there. Next, I'm going to take a small little chunk of McFly lawn in white. And this is about the thickness of a whole little bundle of it. You do not want to use that whole thing. It would be way too much. So I'm going to actually cut it in about a third. I'm just looking for a kind of a sparser little piece of McFly lawn for the wing. So I can trim it away from the bundle here. I'm going to lay this right on top of the shank of the hook. And then you want it to be about the length of the body. So I'm just going to pull it down just a little bit. You don't want this to be too long. If anything, you might want it to be just a hair shorter than the body. It's real easy to make that wing way too big. You could carefully trim out those butt ends. Oop, I just lost an antenna. Accidentally pulled on it. We'll sneak another one in there real quick. You can also tie them in one by one as well, just like I did. They're very delicate. Sometimes when you're trying to pull on the yarn or something, you accidentally pull on the antenna and pluck it out of there. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a tiny, tiny little piece of dubbing. I like to use a natural dubbing for this fly, like a hairline dubbing or a squirrel dubbing. But we're just going to take a tiny little bit here, just coat our thread with it. We're going to lay down a little bundle, kind of right in front of our, our wing there. The natural dubbing kind of has a little bit of spikiness to it. That's the look I'm going for with this fly. It's a caddis pattern, so it's got a lot of legs and antenna and kind of just some shagginess going on. So that's what I'm looking to imitate. All I'm doing is I'm building a little prop, basically. A little spot where I can tie in my, my next material, which will be the legs. For this, I'm going to take a little piece of partridge. I'm going to strip back all the fluff, just exposing the tip of the feather. Then I'm going to take all that, kind of that whole bundle here, and I'm just going to kind of stroke it all together. I'm going to sneak it underneath the fly. Just like so, and you can see that prop basically makes that feather 
stand straight underneath the fly and that's what I'm looking for. Now I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to just put it right in front of my parachute post. And I'm ready for the hackle. Just yet another material. I didn't say this fly was easy to tie. It's quite complicated. But it's worth it when you're on the river. These flies really do fish. I'm just going to take a little piece of dun colored hackle here from a whiting rooster cape. I'm just measuring out one here. I'm going to take that feather here. We're going to tie it in right in front of the parachute post. And I'm actually going to take it and wrap it up the parachute post just a couple of wraps so I can start at the top of that post and then work my way down towards the body. Now before I go forward with it, I'm just going to touch up my dubbing here. I'm going to finish dubbing the back half of the fly. I'm just going to sneak some dubbing underneath the fly here. Doesn't take much. See there, I just kind of built a little bit of a shaggy kind of little ball. Then I'm going to take my hackle. I'm going to start my way down the parachute post here. Carefully, one wrap here at a time. And once I finish here, I'll just capture it. Tricky part here is cutting out all the barbs that are trapped and none of the ones that are on the flies. Sometimes I'll just take my fingernail and kind of push them back a little bit and then I can get in there and trim out any of the, the excess. And any other trapped barbs, you can get in here with a bodkin. Just pull a couple of them out. Then we can finish dubbing the head. So I'm going to take another small little smidgen of dubbing. Very careful not to overdo it. The head just requires a little bit. Just enough to kind of cover things up. Once you're finished, you're going to need to kind of re stand up your parachute, pull your hackle kind of where it all needs to be. When you go to tie it off, you usually end up kind of mangling some of it and pulling some fibers back. Just pull it forward, redistribute the hackle, kind of stand everybody back up.
And sometimes your antenna get lost a little bit, so you can kind of pull those back, back out. And that is a finished spotlight emerger. A lot going on on this fly. Very, very busy little pattern, but very effective. Sits flush to the, basically to the surface of the water. These little legs and kind of this butt will hang down in the water. That parachute post will stand straight up, but great little caddis emerger pattern. Caught a lot of fish for me over the years. And that's the spotlight emerger.